Corn, I guess where to how, how prepared you feel like the uh, offense is heading into feel, this week. You feel really, really well prepared um, until the until the bullets start flying. And um, but we've had a lot of good days of practice. Uh, feel like we've stacked a good day on top of another good day, and and now it's time to go play against somebody besides uh, our own defense. So I'm excited about it. Sounds like Malik's been able to stay healthy throughout all the camp. You feel like he's ready to yeah, roll. Yeah, Malik's had a really, really good camp and and has stayed healthy and. Um, still shows the things that he can do uh, from a special team standpoint with a return, the, the things he does as a returner, but we're fired up about what he can do as an offensive threat. I'm sure going into the first game of any season, it maybe feels like, you know, a kid with a new toy, you want to go try out all these new players and everything. Who, yeah. who are you most forward to seeing for the first time and using in some new ways? Um, I, I think there's a, a couple guys. I mean, I, I, one guy that isn't truly new to the program, but is true to being back is Joe Urban. Really excited about what Joe has done through fall camp. Um, obviously, uh, Daniel, uh, everybody talks about him just because of the tight end position we've had success with and, and what Briley did a year ago. I think Daniel brings some of those same things that he can be a a threat down the field, then we got to show that and he's got to go do it. Um, you know, and I'm really just excited to have Skyler back and, and and let him go be the player that we know he is. On the depth chart, it has both Landry and um, Phillip there as starters. Is it possible to play them together? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would say if you were going to say who are the three starting wide receivers, it, it would be Malik, Brooks, and Landry. Um, if we were in 11 personnel, those would be the guys. If we're in 12 personnel where there's only two of them on there, in any of the combination of those three, I'd feel very, very good with. Which one between Landry and, uh, and Phillip would line up wide in that situation? Um, Phillip will be the inside receiver if we're in, a, in three receiver type sets you know, is there, for the most part. Is there any difference between Skyler right now than Skyler a year ago? Um, I feel like he's he's that much farther ahead from just ability to say, yep, no, I really, really understand the system. I could call it um, on my own. I'm not saying he's looking to call it on his own, but that, that, that feel that I know kind of what you're wanting. I understand why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and that's what we've always said, that, that in this system, the longer you're in it, the more you can almost say, no, nah, I know why you just called that play to set up the next play, that type thing. I know the weirdness of last season makes it hard to call much from scouting video. You had six games on the Stanford defense. What do you see from that? Um, you know, they're, they're one, they're, they're massive inside. Uh, I mean, really, really big interior front. Um, both outside linebacker type guys that also play DNs are also extremely long. Um, from the back end standpoint, that they, they, I mean, they, they're really, really, really good playing man coverage. I mean, if you were to say, what do they play? Probably half the time they're gonna play some type of man-to-man. -man. Um, and and I'm, you know, I, I'll be interested to see how we can handle that. Obviously a Phillip and a Malik and a, our tight ends and Deuce when he's out in space, they have to be able to win against man coverage and, and that's what I anticipate they'll play. Is the mental side kind of the obstacle for Tyron Hall at this point? A hundred percent. It's just there's so many things for him to learn, not just the, from the passing game, but also in the run game. Um, and uh, I wouldn't call our running game complicated, but our wideouts are very important to us having plays that are more than just three, four, five yard plays, having 10, 12, 15 yard plays. Do you feel like contributor? Do you need Samuel Wheeler to be? Uh, you know, the great part is I, I, he, he has been hundred percent healthy feels really good. Um, he needs to be a guy that uh, when you see him catch the football, you don't realize that he's a tight end and, and not a wide receiver. And, and I believe he can do that for us. He needs to do that. Any wrinkles where you use him at wide receiver? Um, but he will be flexed out mm -hmm. some. It'd still be more of that inside receiver tight end, just a flexed guy. What kind of dynamic have you seen from number four, Thomas Booker, that's Stanford's defense fan? Well, it, one, uh, same, same deal that I was talking. He's a large dude that really, really has impact plays. Um, you'll see him fall back in to, to tackle a tailback um, that's maybe run zone away from him, and he falls in, and when he hits him, he, th th there's movement, there, and, and there's not a lot of yards after contact. How much different or uh, better will it be to look at the whole playbook right now with Skyler back as opposed to last year when you maybe had Yeah, well, I, I think the biggest thing is uh, Skyler's got to be able to do what he was able to in the past, and that's, uh, you know, let us throw the football down the field and throw it down the field accurately. And, and I, I feel like this, this fall camp he's done that.
with your skill positions? Is it kind of going to look like hockey line changes again, like we've seen? Yeah, yeah, we hope to. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously Deuce is a phenomenal player, but but you can't have him out there touching the ball every single snap. You've got to make sure you're you're using all the talents of the of the guys that we have, and and I feel good that we have a number of guys that we can get the ball to. And what's the biggest change for not having Taylor Portier is it Cooper VP maybe playing on the interior a little bit more? Uh, you know that'll be uh, that'll be a work in progress a little bit as far as how we find that seven and eight linemen. Um, right now, obviously uh, Ben Adler is 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 lining up in the right guard spot. Um, our biggest deal is we get 65, 70, 80 plays into a game. How are you making sure you mix and match uh, that old line? Because you know besides Noah Johnson. Uh, that, you know, who's the guy that you'd say is 100% solidified, ready to go play 70 plays? And I, and I don't know that there's anybody that's, that, you know, probably Revis would be, but th those two would be the main two guys that I would say, yep, you're gonna see them play the whole time. Cooper cer certainly should. Um, he just is a little bit of a swing guy because he can play inside and outside. With, with so many returning players, is there any temptation to go a little more up-tempo faster just because they know everything? Um, you know, there, there's always that if you can get a free, quick play that, that you'd love to do it. You know, our mindset still is going to be the, the normal, hey, we're going to get lined up, going to make sure we know where we're at, and then go play. Um, but, but, you know, the, there's nothing wrong with a little tempo periodically, and it forces a defense to have to worry about that you may go fast. Deuce mentioned the other day he felt like one of the areas he's improved most is route running. How much have you seen that, and how much of a weapon can he be in? in um, yeah, well, he just he, – it's funny that he says he's seen a lot of improvement. In it. It's its more he is a innate, very, very natural um, go play the game, meaning if he's out in space and now it's a, 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 a DB's covering him, he understands how to get open. It's like he's a guy you'd throw him out there. I don't know if he can shoot a lick as a basketball player, but would be able to just go play one-on-one -on -one basketball. And, and that's how he plays football, very, very natural and very dynamic. Where is your offensive line week one versus 2020 week one? Oh, what? Well, head and shoulders ahead just because of the number of reps they've had in practice during spring ball and fall camp. Um, and, and not just individual players, how much better they may or may not be, but more as a group of five. I feel like uh, ro more. rotating on the offensive line isn't universal across those teams. Why do you guys think that's important that you need a few backups? Well, I think the biggest thing isn't that you're going to say, hey, this guy has to come out on this series. It's, it's figuring out how to keep the, the group of five the, the strongest throughout four quarters. And for me, if you can have two or three guys that are rotating in and giving guys spells, then in the fourth quarter, you're just as strong as you were in the first. And that's, that'll be huge for us. Is the running back by committee, is that kind of going to be by feel, or do you think you'll play three? Uh, I know we'll play two for sure. Uh, it won't surprise me at all to play three. Um, I, I think it's a little bit by the, the feel and, and how many plays are you getting and, and a little bit how much you're throwing it, how much are you running the ball. All right, guys. Thanks. Great. Coach. Thank you.